Gut health is a, a pretty broad concept that covers not only how feed is digested throughout the gastrointestinal tract, but also covers nutrient absorption. And probably what's getting more focused recently is the immune competence of that gastrointestinal tract to make sure nutrients can be absorbed while preventing molecules or pathogens from crossing that gut in a non-regulated manner. So a very broad term, but really important physiological implications. When I think about gut health, I'm primarily interested in the barrier function of the GI tract. In other words, keeping unwanted molecules like antigens and pathogens from infiltrating through the intestinal barrier. Digestive function really drives performance outcomes, it really drives health of animals, and it drives the economics associated with, with livestock production. So we want to make sure that we have good utilization of feed, and that's both good from an animal health perspective, a performance perspective, and an environmental perspective, reducing our ecological footprint. Most of an animal's immune system, up to 80%, resides inside of the GI tract. This immune system is there for a reason. It's uh, to protect in, from invading pathogens. But if there is too much leaky gut, and it becomes hyperpermeable, these invading antigens will stimulate the immune response. And the activated immune response requires an enormous amount of nutrients, primarily glucose and amino acids. Nutrients that would otherwise be uh, used for the synthesis of valuable products like skeletal muscle. There are a variety of on-farm events that are common that cause leaky gut or damage the, the healthiness of the gut. They include things like heat stress, shipping, weaning, uh, off-feed events, anything that causes excessive fermentation in the large intestine. So these are mostly management issues, some of them nutrition, but most of it is management regarding um, very typical on-farm issues. I think if we're going to feed for gut health, we again need to refer back to those functions. So we need a microbial ecosystem, not just in the rumen, but also in the intestinal regions that is helping to facilitate that digestion of feed. And then again, absorb the nutrients that come from that digestion to support energy and uh, metabolizable protein supply. Finally, we need to manage that immune system. And so we want to make sure that the immune system is capable of responding, but we're not trying to trigger an over and an overemphasized response, which in many cases can have a, a greater negative effect than, than a lack of response. Yeah, I think we're starting to learn more about gut health in terms of suggesting that inflammatory responses that occur in the gastrointestinal tract might have broader implications elsewhere. So there's connections with the liver uh, through liver abscesses. Systemic inflammation is certainly present. A healthy gut is critical to ensure that the feed is digested in the manner that we intend to make sure those nutrients are absorbed and to prevent an unnecessary immune activation systemically. So it's really there to regulate what compounds get in really prioritizing nutrient absorption and regulating those other compounds from entering the systemic circulation. The first part of silage is really the preparation and, and making sure that the silage we're preparing is going to undergo efficient and rapid fermentation and then to make sure that our feed out processes are not going to increase risk for aerobic respiration and spoilage. An interesting aspect with gut health is we're starting to recognize there are connections beyond the gastrointestinal tract. And so factors that cause inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract might actually be able to cause inflammation in other regions. I think this is probably most uh, commonly known about in the association between uh, rumen acidosis and, and the liver abscess complex. But I think there's a growing body of evidence suggesting that this could also be occurring in the respiratory tract, probably also occurring with the mammary gland, probably also occurring uh, with the reproductive tract, and so much broader implications where gut health may impact other regions and other organ systems. And to do that, we need to make sure we have a good microbial balance 
and an effective digestive system. So really driving all those production responses that we're looking through or looking for through healthy cows by maintaining that gut microbial balance.